This is my Dell XPS from 2021. Last month, I tried out Linux for the first time as I was trying to revive it from the dead state where it would get stuck on the boot screen and just shut off over and over again. And surprisingly, it worked. I did it. So I shared my experience in a video where many of you congratulated me for trying Linux out. But many of you also said that Mint, the version of Linux that most resembles Windows, was the wrong choice, that it's ugly and outdated. That Fedora is the best version of Linux, especially since I use a Mac as my main work computer. Hence, my strange choice of headgear for this video, my lady. Then I started thinking, hmm, Mint is a bit old school looking. Did I make a mistake? Is Fedora really the best? Or is the grass always going to be greener on the other side? So I challenged myself, could I replace my Mac, my main workstation, for an entire work week with Fedora without going back? This is a serious escalation from just using Linux as a side piece. I'll be using it for almost everything now. It's sort of scary. Hmm. Nonetheless, I'm going into this with an open mind. After all, I don't want to master Linux in just a day or even just a month. I want to experience it like anyone else would, which means starting from zero and figuring out what I like and don't like one distro at a time. So after downloading, installing, and using Mint for well over a month, I'm basically a Linux expert at this point, right? Oh boy, was I wrong. When you open up the Fedora website, you're met with words that look like they come from another planet. But look, it's a officially on version 42. Is this a sign that this is the answer to the meaning of life and the universe? This seems reassuring though. It's been through so many iterations. That means all the bugs must be squashed out already. So let's just get Fedora. Oh no, not this again. Getting Fedora isn't as easy as clicking a link and downloading it. There's actually many versions of Fedora. There's Workstation, KDE Plasma. That one sounds like a cool weapon. And there's a server that runs on bare metal. Is that a euphemism for something? You also have the cloud, core OS, and IoT, Internet of Things. And after reading all the pages explaining what each one was for, I'm stuck between Workstation, the Linux desktop you've been waiting for, and KDE Plasma, the next generation personal desktop. Now, I would love a which fedora is right for you quiz, but if there's one thing I learned about Linux users, myself included, it's that we like the struggle. We don't want the answers handed out to us like free candy. No, we like to be in control of our own decisions. And for me, that meant choosing between beautiful and customizable. Ooh, which one? But how do I make that decision? Well, apparently KDE Plasma is a DE, also known as a desktop environment, and Workstation is based off GNOME, another DE. A DE is basically the visual part of interacting with your computer. It affects how it looks and how it feels. And Mint Cinnamon, what I used before, worked great out of the box. But honestly, it was a bit ugly. The menus weren't sleek or streamlined. It looked like something out of the year 2000. And I want something for 2025 and onwards. So let's just go with the complete opposite of Mint with the beautiful workstation. Part of me was hesitant to move forward with the installation, not because I thought it would be hard. I've done it before. I'm usually a practical person. I don't usually want more or better or even the best. I don't own a ton of shoes or clothes and I buy old refurbished tech. If Fedora doesn't work out, I would just be wasting a week. But there was something else that scared me. What if I actually do want more and I want better? And that's why I'm looking to Fedora and other distros. Is what I have just not enough for me? What if I wasn't as practical as I thought I was? Now I pushed those questions away and I continued anyways. Installation seems fairly simple. I've done it before. There are four potential download links, but which one do I get? That's when I remembered a ton of advice I got from my previous video where the audience said to use ChatGPT for tech help. Now, I'm a little skeptical of using AI for most tasks, but it is pretty good at browsing the internet and looking for answers. So between the four ISOs, x86 underscore 64 is the one to download. It said to use this if you have a regular laptop or desktop from the last 10 to 15 years, which I do. And like before, I had to verify the authenticity of the ISO file. You would think that I already knew how to do this, but I struggled a little bit more than I would have liked, but I got it done. Next, Fedora comes with a media writer. Ooh, that's easy. I can just download the software and then load the thing up to my boot drive. Unfortunately, it didn't work on my MacBook, so I ended up using Balena Etcher again. At this point, I was pretty glad that I had previous experience with Linux or this would have been a lot harder. Afterwards, things went relatively smooth, like life was finally on easy mode. I put in the command in the terminal to go to the UV menu with system, control, reboot, firmware setup, and 
off I went, and it was just beautiful. Beautiful isn't even enough to describe it. It was breathtaking. The colors were vibrant, the date and time was dead center, and it looks like everything I had wanted in the world. Installation was simple. There were four steps. I went all in and did a clean, full install, erasing all traces of mint cinnamon. And when it was done, whew, I felt like I was transported in the future. Mint felt like a dinosaur. This though, this could be endgame. But is it just a pretty face or is there actual substance beneath the surface? So Fedora, even gave me a wonderful tour, although it wasn't very thorough or that helpful for that matter. I learned about the overview button, which is like the spotlight, the dock, and the mission control all in Mac, and all those features had a baby. Now, I didn't understand it at the time, but the overview feature gave me great power. And with great power came great responsibility too. There was something else that felt off, a real strange feeling, like where was the minimize and maximize buttons? Where are my desktop icons and where is my dock? What is going on? How do I even use it? It's way different than anything I had used before. But first things first, I had to download OBS to record my screen for you. So I opened up the terminal and typed what I knew. sudo apt install OBS dash studio, like on Mint, expecting it to magically download and install the software for me. But surprise, Fedora doesn't work like that. APT doesn't exist in Fedora. Apparently, instead of APT, I'm supposed to use DNF, which is did not finish. After consulting ChatGPT, I replaced APT with DNF and boom, once again, I was an elite hacker. But then I remembered something else. In my last video on Linux, I thought that you had to install programs using the command line or else it wouldn't update properly. And thousands Thousands, and yes, I actually mean many thousands of comments, told me to just use the software manager. So let's find that. Fedora has a beautiful software manager called software. <laughs> pretty obvious. Apparently the software manager is just a visual representation of the exact same thing that I was doing in the command line. They're not separate things like I had thought. Now that I can record my screen, here's where the real challenge starts. Making Fedora work for what I want it to do. That means one, connecting it to my laptop dock and monitor setup so I can have multiple monitors and a real desk setup without using just a laptop. Two, customize some keyboard shortcuts, swap out left control and left alt, and three, get back my minimize button. Four, change how I access the overview feature for the same way that I use Spotlight and make minimizing windows easier and enable window snapping. Then go on an entire week without going back to my Mac. Easy enough, right? I love how beautiful Fedora is, but can it be functional too? Is it all looks? No personality. Now I can find out if Fedora can actually replace my Mac or not. So first, my laptop dock. Let's plug it in, fix some problems, because let's be real, there's no way that this would just magically work out of the box. So neither my monitors or the dock works, which I had expected. But for the dock, I knew the exact fix already and it was simple. I just had to authorize the dock in my terminal using bolt control list and then authorize. The downside is I have to do this every single time I reboot my laptop. It's a real pain in the butt, but alas, it's a security thing and I'm not gonna turn that off. Next, the monitors. This is the difficult part. The software that my monitor hub uses is called Display Link and only has a Debian based driver, which works for distros like Ubuntu and Mint, but not Fedora. This was the first step where I felt like a true beginner again. Fedora looked simple in the beginning, but is support for it more limited than Mint? We'll see. But I'm sure there's many people out there who like me wanted to use multiple monitors with their Fedora laptop. This however was not as easy as my previous problems. I read a bunch of forum posts, consulted ChatGPT, did a bunch of things in my terminal and nothing worked. Disappointment overshadowed my every action as I tried more and more potential solutions. If I couldn't use my monitors with my laptop, I would be forced to set it aside as an after work computer. But for some reason, I suddenly felt the urge to just restart my computer, which magically fixed my problem. I had no idea what I did that worked and I don't think I'll ever know. It's like when your TV stops working back in the day and you just kick it a couple times and then it works. So yay, I did it. I can't help anyone else with this problem, but at least I solved it. Solving problems felt like leveling up, like I'm finally past the noob stage. I understand the terminal better. I'm comfortable using it way more than before. So I was off on my merry way with my docked setup. Now for all of the settings. But Fedora, it's clean. It's very clean 
clean. There's virtually zero bloat installed. There's barely any programs and customizing it is so easy and so fun. I went through each setting and just set it up how I wanted my displays, Bluetooth, even my notification settings. And wait, what's this? A built-in screen time feature with movement breaks? I've got to turn this one on. My Mac never cared about me like this and maybe I need, I need this. I need to take breaks. Finally, an operating system that just, that just cares. Most of my other work enhancements were simple and built into the settings, like changing the overview to alt space and swapping left alt and control. I did have to download a program called tweaks to bring back the minimize button, but it also came with something I didn't know I needed that you can middle click to minimize and double click to maximize. <sighs> Now I don't even have to go and press the buttons. I can just press my mouse. It's so efficient. It's so fast. I don't even think Mac has these things. And did I mention it has a window snapping built in? You just hover your windows until you see a purple shadow and then just snaps. It's beautiful and it's practical. The only problem, maybe maybe there's more later, is when someone else uses my laptop, they have no idea where the menus are, how to open programs or files or anything. It's not like the overview button is intuitive, but once you use it, it's hard going going back. Now my desktop is just clean. There's no programs, no apps, no docs, no menus, just pure wallpaper. There were a couple more things I needed to work though. Discord and Notion. Discord I downloaded through the software manager and it was a bit buggy, actually very buggy. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So I just bookmarked the browser version. The same thing with Notion. It doesn't offer Linux support, but it has an online version. So before I get to work, let's address the last possible elephant in the room gaming. Last video, I tested out gaming on Mint and it worked, but I don't really think that's necessary. I game on my Steam Deck and never on my laptop anyway, so it wouldn't even be practical to install games on it. So work was going well. I got used to my entire setup with my laptop and it felt natural and easy. Then something crazy happened, something that I didn't expect to happen. Midway through the week, I upgraded my CalDigit TS3 to a TS5 Plus, but unfortunately, it didn't support Windows Thunderbolt 3 laptops like my Dell. LXPS anymore. So I went back to my Mac for a bit to test a new dock and that's when I realized I missed it. I missed Fedora a lot. The overview, the look, the feel, even the features that I looked for on Mac to make it like Fedora, I couldn't find and I was officially converted. But I also didn't want to give up my Mac either. I mean, the thing was $600. I'm not just going to push it aside and throw it to the curb. I take great pride in running the items I own into the ground. But maybe Fedora was just an initial infatuation, a mere short-term crush. It's just beautiful. Or could this turn into something more? The more I used it, the more I could sense some of Fedora's weaknesses. The first is that it took a toll on my laptop's battery life, especially compared to Mint. All those streamlinedness, the sleek transitions, the beautiful desktops, it comes at a cost and that cost is battery life. So while Fedora is elegant and smooth, it's much hungrier. When I'm not plugged in, my battery life can drain from 100% to zero within just a couple hours. But also keep in mind that this laptop is a couple years old and it was already having battery issues before this Linux journey. So I guess it's like a zombie revive from the dead. But while I would love to make this my main PC, it's a little difficult. I would have to lug around my awkward Dell charger everywhere while my Mac can accept most USB-C chargers. Working with Fedora is simple. All I have to do is browse the internet, use Notion and Discord, and it has everything I need. Now, I definitely don't regret giving it a try. It's been a great experience. Mac has more versatility for me in my day to day, but that doesn't mean I won't be keeping Fedora either. I'm 100% sure I like it better than Mint. So right now, my Fedora laptop is my main work laptop. It's not attached to the dock, but it is attached to my monitors and a keyboard and mouse Bluetooth setup. While my Mac is my more portable at home laptop. Well, 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 how the turntables. And I've customized both laptops to make them similar, where there aren't any workflow disruptions if I switch from one to the other. I love it. But now I have another question that's been lurking around. If this is how I feel about my second Linux distro, what if the next one is even better? What if there's something out there, something more beautiful, more streamlined, and more functional? Hmm, I can't help but wonder. Mint really was the gateway drug getting me into Linux in the first place. But Fedora, 
I think I could stick with this a while. While I'm pretty new to Linux, I think I need to stick to this one for a while, but truly, I can't help but wonder what the next step of the journey is. Or maybe the best distro doesn't exist, but for now, I found something that works and that's what matters. So if you've been afraid to get started in Linux, don't be. It's actually super fun and an amazing educational journey. And if you've been a Linux user for a while, I'd love to hear your journey through Linux. How did you start? Where are you at now? And if you're interested in my Mint Cinnamon experience, watch this video here. 